Now, I got to be honest, when you just have the graph of a distribution of a quantitative variable, there's really not a whole lot you could say about the distribution, so you kind of have to be a little bit vague. But if you actually have all the individual values, there's so much more we could do. Let's start off by talking about measures of center. Here we're talking about the mean and the median. Now, these are both the most famous measures of center. The mean is found simply by adding all the values together and dividing by how many you have. It's a pretty simple formula. But the mean is influ easily influenced by outliers. Remember, the mean is trying to balance everything out. And if there's one really, really large outlier, the mean's going to move up a little bit because of it to keep it balanced. That one large outlier might only be one value, but it weighs just as much as a bunch of the other small values. Now, the median is simply the middle value, no matter what. If you have an odd amount of data points, then there is an exact median in the middle. If you have an even number of data points in AP statistics, we just take the average of the middle two values. Now, there is no formula to tell you what the median is. You simply have to put your data in order and find the middle. But there is, there is one really cool thing you can do that's going to help you, and that is by using the formula n plus 1 divided by 2. This formula will not tell you what the median is, but it will tell you the location of the median if your data is in order. For example, if you have 19 pieces of data, 19 plus 1 is 20, 20 divided by 2 is 10. That means that the median is the 10th value. If you have 20 pieces of data, 20 plus 1 is 21, divided by 2 is 10 and a half. That means that the median is located between the 10th and the 11th value. So find the 10th value, find the 11th value, and average them together to get your median. Now, the median is not influenced by outliers because you could have an absolutely enormous outlier on the far left or the far right, and the median doesn't care at all because he or she is just sitting pretty right in the middle. That value on the left could go as far as it wants away, and it's not going to affect the median at all, but it will affect the mean. Now, what's really important for you to know when it comes to the mean and the median for AP statistics is this. When your data is roughly symmetric, the mean and the median will be pretty close together. So even if you don't have a picture of your data and you're like, I don't know what the shape is, but you do have the mean and the median and they're really, really close to each other, then that's telling you that your data is symmetric. When you are skewed to the left, the mean is going to be smaller than the median. When you're skewed to the right, the mean is going to be larger than the median. We can actually see this pretty clearly in these four graphs. And the top two graphs are both symmetric, albeit in different ways. But because they're symmetric, the mean and the median are going to be about the same place. The arrow represents the mean and the M represents the median. Now, the official symbol that we have for a mean of a sample is X bar. It's X with a little bar over top of it. We don't really have any official symbol for the median. We just maybe use an M or write out the word median. Now, when data, again, like I already mentioned, is skewed to the left, like this purple graph, the mean, the arrow, is going to be a little bit less than the median. And when your data is skewed to the right, like in blue, the mean, the arrow, is going to be a little bit greater than the median. Now, let's talk about why very quickly. Well, for example, in that blue graph, yes, the majority of data is at the bottom to the lower values. But those higher trees, because remember, this is our tree data, even though there's only a couple of them at that far right, they all heavier. They're, they're, they're worth more, right? They're, they're of bigger value to the data set, and the mean has to take them into account. So even though there's only a couple of them, they have more weight to them, if that makes sense. That's going to pull the mean higher. Now, we also have what are known as measures of position. These are values that tell you where you are in the data. Now, probably one of the most famous is what's called a percentile. You might hear this all the time, especially when working with ACT or ACT scores. A percentile or a, a particular values percentile is the percentage of data at or below that score. So for example, maybe you take the SAT and you find out that you scored the 95th percentile. That means that 95% of other students scored at your level or below, which means 5% were above you. So that tells you your position in the data is pretty good. You're at the high end. Now we also have what's known as the first quartile. The first quartile is known as the 25th percentile. Think of it as the middle of the bottom half of your data. 25% of data is below it, 75% of data is above it. The median, which we already know is the middle of our data, is actually known as the 50th percentile because 50% of data is below it, 50% is above it. And the third quartile, also known as Q3, is known as the 75th percentile. It has 75% of data below it, 25% of data above it. So these are just some important percentiles, but really a percentile can be any value. For example, the 42nd percentile has 42% of data at or below it. 
But again, percentiles really specifically tell you where you fall in the data. Next up, we have measures of spread. There are three measures of spread, range, which is simply your max minus your min. Now that's gonna be very easily influenced by outliers. So if you haven't outlined your data, it's gonna make your range look huge. Whereas realistically, the overall range of your data might not be that big because that outlier. Then we have what's known as the IQR. That stands for interquartile range. This is the range of the middle 50% of your data from Q3 to Q1. So finding it's really easy, just take the third quartile and subtract the first quartile. Lastly, we have probably the most common and most used and most famous measures of spread, the standard deviation. The standard deviation is a pretty complicated formula, which you see here, but honestly, you're always going to use technology to find it for the most part, or you'll be given it. But what's more important is you know what the standard deviation represents. It represents how far a majority of data is from the mean. So if you have a very large standard deviation, that tells you typically most of your data is very far from the mean, whether it's above or below. If you have a very small standard deviation, that means that most of your data is very close to the mean in the middle not too far above, not too far below. Now, could there still be some data further and further away, whether it be above or below? Of course, but again, it's speaking to where the majority of the data falls. Lastly, we have outliers. Now, when you're looking at a graph, you might just kind of vaguely say, oh, that looks like it could be an outlier, or maybe it's not. But now we have actually specific ways to measure or determine if you have outliers in your data. Now, there are two of them, and which one to use really depends upon what information you have. If you have your quartiles, then what you can use will be called the fence method. So we basically find the upper fence and the lower fence. The upper fence is found by taking Q3, the third quartile, and adding 1.5 times the IQR. And if any value in your data is above that number, which you just calculated as your upper fence, then it is an outlier. You could have one, you could have none, you could have five or six, who knows? To find the lower fence, you take Q1, the first quartile, subtract 1.5 times your IQR, and that gives you your lower fence. Any value in your data set below that number is considered an outlier. Again, you could have none, one, two, more, more, however many you got. Now, the second way that you can determine outliers is using your mean and standard deviation. Now, remember, we know that the majority of data is within one standard deviation of the mean because that's, well, what's typical. So we identify an outlier as any value that is more than two standard deviations, either above or below the mean. So if you take your mean and you add two standard deviations, and then you take your mean and you subtract two standard deviations, you get an interval. Any values in your data that's outside of that interval would be considered outliers. Now, I'm gonna be honest with you, the fence method is probably the most famous method to find outliers, but the mean and standard deviation method certainly works. But again, it all depends what you have. If you don't know the mean and standard deviation, all you have is your quartiles, then you're going to use the fence method. If you have your mean and your standard deviation, then you could certainly use that method as well to determine if you have any outliers in your data. Now that we've very quickly gone over all the different summary statistics, let's talk about how they can be transformed if your data is transformed. Now, there's two different ways to transform your data. First, we could take every single data value that we have and we could add a value to them all. We could subtract the value to them all or we can multiply all the values. Now, how does that impact the different measures of summer statistics that we just learned? Well, addition and subtraction affect measures of center and measures of position. If you add five to all your values, your mean's gonna go up five, your mean's gonna go up five, the third quartile is gonna go up five, the 25th percentile is gonna go up five, the 42nd percentile is gonna go up five. But what will not change is measures of spread, range, standard deviation, and IQR they are not affected at all by adding or subtracting values to all of your data. However, if you multiply all of your data by a specific value, that will affect all measures of statistics. It's going to affect measures of center. So if you multiply all your data by 0.2, for example, mean, median are going to multiply by 0.2, range, IQR, standardization, they're going to buy, multiply by 0.2, and same with all your measures of position. Basically, everything will be multiplied by 0.2. Now, if you're going to transform them in two ways, maybe you're going to multiply and then add, just note that the multiplication affects everything, measures of center, measures of spread, and measures of position, but the measures of spread will not add whatever that constant is. Now, the second way we could transform data is by adding data to our data set or taking data away. Now, 
it's really important for you to understand that it's where that value is. So if you have a data set and you add a huge, enormous outlier in the far right, well, your median's not going to change much at all. It might move over a little bit because you are, you are adding a new data to your data set, but it's not going to change much. Whereas the mean is going to definitely get bigger because of that really big outlier. Remember, the mean has to take every value's value into account. If you add a value that weighs a whole lot, it's going to make the mean go higher. Now, if you add a new value and it's just like all the other values, it's kind of right in the middle, then once again, your median's not going to change a whole lot and your mean's not going to change much either. All right, that's it for summary statistics. There's a lot to go on there and a lot of new things we learned, but you know, feel free to take the time to make sure you review it all and that it all makes sense to you.